parallel X pipe, splayed X pipe, parallel to splayed Y pipe, H pipe, all of that is going to be covered in this episode. And yes, I finally got my Doug's welding cap. Ha! Now this has been a relatively difficult topic for me to cover and the requests have been just absolutely tremendous for this type of fabrication work. So I got to tell you flat out, it's expensive for me to do something like this, not complaining at all, but I do have to thank Stainless Bros for sending all of this stuff out here. Now in recent times, you noticed I've actually been using their product a little bit more because it's so like literally epic and like ready to use straight out of the box that it actually saves me time. But I never used the mandrels or anything like that before, and I gotta tell you, just seriously, they're not paying me to do this, but at the same time, these are probably the greatest elbows I have ever, ever used because they're completely clean on the outside, completely clean on the inside, and the tolerance of each one of them stays almost exactly the same, which makes stuff like this, precision work, which we have to cover, extremely easy to do. So make sure you head over there, check out stainlessbros.com, get a hold of some of their stainless, use it because I seriously can't see myself using anything else. So, moving on. If you have a crappy bandsaw or a bandsaw that cannot maintain this kind of precision as I'm showing you in this video here with this tight of a cut without messing it up or anything like that, you're probably gonna be spending a whole lot of time chasing this stuff out, cleaning it up, and going over it back over it by hand. You're probably not gonna see the same type of precision that I have demonstrated in this video. Don't get discouraged, but it's a good idea to invest in a really good bandsaw. Now, my bandsaw is very expensive and it's very hard to find. It's Italian made, it is a total beast. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a common link for everybody to look into, so I do have in the description below a handful of uh, bandsaws. A couple of them I've used, a couple of them my buddies have used, also professional fabricators, and one that you know pretty much everybody loves. So definitely check that out as soon as you uh, get done with this video, see what I recommend for a really good, solid bandsaw. Now, there's a couple of things that we've got to cover on this one, and that's basically the nomenclature or the uh, terms, descriptions, designs of each part that's going to avoid some sort of confusion as I blast my way through all of this stuff. The two terms that you need to know, parallel and splayed. Now, to splay something means to spread, to go one direction versus the other one. Parallel meaning where it exits the transition, it's going to go completely next to each other. That's where they're going to land. They're going to go right next to each other and run parallel to each other. Now, one's not better than the other or anything like that, but you've got to understand the difference between parallel and splayed. The splayed versions go outward. That's basically all it means. Is one going to go this way, one's going to go that way. And that refers to the junction that is made here. Right? It doesn't refer to where the exhaust is going to go after this, it just refers to the actual junction. One goes this way, one goes that way. Even if we put uh, you know, an elbow at the end of this and make them run parallel, this junction right here is actually splayed. Okay? Now on the parallel side means that in the junction itself they actually go out and then turn back into each other with that curvature involved. Okay? So they end up being parallel at the end of the junction not splayed at the end of the junction, right? Some people would call this, uh, instead of splayed, they would use a different term, which means straight. That's actually very common to see that. So just remember, parallel, straight, parallel, splayed, any one of those versions, they would technically be correct. So parallel means that it's coming out parallel, splayed means it's coming out in different directions. Let's start with the parallel X pipe. Now I'm gonna make this just a little bit easier to see what we're doing here, and I removed the vise on the band side. It's gonna be on after this, but we basically need to slice straight down on the back side of that, uh, that elbow. And in order to do that, we're going to need to have some sort of a stop that dictates the amount of uh, measurement or the amount of material we're going to remove from the back side of that elbow. That's the point of this, uh, this stop right here. It's tall, and it allows the elbow to actually rest up against it. So I'm going to clamp that down onto the actual back stop. Then after we have our measurement set, I'm going to go in there and we'll square it so it stands vertically, and we can chop straight down once it's actually clamped in there. So this is essentially what it looks like when we're ready to start uh, chopping down on it. But one thing you need to note about this one is the typical amount of material removed from the back side of the elbow is anywhere between 25 and 33 percent. In this case, I'm removing 30 percent or about one third of the actual diameter of that tube to slice down on the back side of it. The reason why we do so little instead of something like 50 percent is that we don't create a choking point and we also uh, allow enough airflow without turbulence to go through there. So it's just a general rule of thumb to follow, and that's typically what most people do. They usually stick around 33% or one third, or somewhere over 30%. When it comes to slicing these elbows down, take your dear sweet time. 
make sure that you actually let the saw do all of the cutting, which will discourage the blade to walk, move, warp, distort, or shift on you. And in this case, I have to actually remove that section down below in order to uh, finish the cut here because the uh, clamp interferes with my saw. But before I actually get this uh, elbow out of here that was just cut off, I actually need to go back in there, uh, fit the piece back in there, and double check my measurement because remember I had to remove the stop in order for the elbow to sit, and these both have to be cut nearly identical. So once it's off of here, you can see after taking our time and getting that nice precision cut, it is perfectly straight. You have absolutely no worries, no issues, and all we gotta do is do it again. So we're gonna line up another elbow, get it set up in here, take our dear sweet time letting that saw do all of the work, not our muscles, and get it all cut out. Now we'll do a quick fit check. Look at that. Beautiful. Minimal cleanup involved. Now, as far as cleanup is concerned, we have just a little bit of a tang here left at the bottom of it. That's when the uh, metal actually breaks off rather than getting cut by the saw and then the saw blade deflects. So we do have to attack that and we're going to get around these edges just a little bit. But the uh, flap disc will make very light work out of it, just literally just enough to take the burrs off. And then I'm going to go in here with a little deburr tool. Now, there is a link to this down in the uh, approved tool list uh, down in the description below, as well as another bunch of other tools and things that you see me use like the flap discs and the and the uh, clamps and all the rest of that good stuff below. This is a definitely an awesome tool to have, especially when it comes to doing nice little precision work like this. Now in order to make the parallel X pipe actually come out or exit parallel, we need to actually turn the direction of it because those 90s as we cut them in half, they'll be 45 degrees coming out as is, so we need to go another 45 degrees back in to make them come out parallel. In order to do that, we're going to take a 90, slice it right down the middle. So the most important thing here is making sure that it is one, level, so you have two identical pieces, and two, it needs to be centered. So take a measurement from two points on your elbow, measure the distance in between it, divide by two, set your blade up right down the middle there, and make sure it is level so it cuts perfectly straight. The end result should be two identical pieces, just like this. Cleanup is nothing more than a flap disc around the edges. Remember, nice and easy. Don't take any gouges or anything else out of it. Now, if you would like to change the distance in between the exit points on your parallel X pipe, you need to add some standoffs. So I'm going to do that with one side, and I'm going to use, of course, some straight two and a half inch stainless steel from StainlessBros.com. I'm going to load this up. There's no particular measurement. You actually have to calculate this and measure it on your own. So I think I'm cutting these at like somewhere around three inches. That'll give you kind of an idea of uh, kind of what they look like. So two of these. Cut off nice and even, clean them up, ready to roll. When it comes to welding, you definitely need to make sure that you take your time and ensure that everything is perfectly lined up. Now, if you have been able to make precision cuts like I have with the bandsaw, you can simply take a nice flat surface like this piece of aluminum I have on my table and then tack everything together as it's laid out flat. It should line up perfect. Remember, take your dear sweet time. So as soon as we have the center of it tacked up, I'm gonna tack the legs for the exit. I'm gonna just tack them straight up on one side so you can see what it looks like as a standard parallel X pipe. Now, while I'm welding this together, I've got just a little bit of downtime, and I have to make a very, very sad announcement about this episode here, and that is, I am all out of argon, so I don't get to weld it all together. Oh well. Now, once I have those two elbows welded up here, I'm going to add the standoffs, so we'll just tack these together. Make sure that your fit is nice and tight. You need to have a perfect fit when it comes to making uh, stainless uh, go together. I mean, aside from reducing turbulence and optimizing flow, you definitely want that good tight fit up for a good solid weld on stainless steel. As soon as I have the standoffs attached, we'll attach the other two 45s, and this makes one complete parallel X-pipe. Now the parallel X-pipe is generally regarded as one of the more difficult ones to make because of that transition and how it all works out. But you can see at the end of the day, it's actually not that complicated. A little attention to detail. Make sure that you got some precision in there. Make sure your fit is perfect before you get moving on it. And the rest is just practice. That's all, it's all it takes. Now, moving on, the splayed X-pipe. Now this one, I'm just going to cover this in the beginning in case you skip my voiceover. You'll want to pay attention to the math on this one, okay? The math is extremely important because you're not going to get this fit up if you don't pay attention, take your measurements properly. I also did this in two different angles just for demonstration purposes. Typically, they don't enter in one angle and exit on the other. They actually usually go in there at the same on both sides. But take it for what it is. It's just to show you that you can actually merge two separate angles 
into the, basically the same transition or the same assembly when it's all said and done, as long as you follow the math. Here we go. We need a reference. Now, utilizing the same trick we used in Pie Cuts Part 2, I'm going to measure out half the diameter of the tube, mark it in a few places, and then take a straight edge and draw a line to connect all of them so we have a great 50% uh, reference mark on our tube, which is something that we need. I'm going to make the same mark on the saw so that way we make sure that we have it clocked every direction that we need to be so they're all pretty much identical. It's going to be a great reference. You'll see how it goes. Now, of course, when I'm cutting them to length, uh, we don't need to worry about the reference. That's only when it comes to angle cutting. So in case you're a little confused, you know, that's the reason why. The most common merge angle you see in splayed transitions like this is actually 45 degrees. But that's 45 degrees between two pieces. So in order to get the correct cut angles to make that transition, we need to take the total angle in between, divide by two, and that will be the amount that's cut off of each leg. So in this case, I set the saw up to 22 and a half degrees so we can get a 45 degree transition. Now we are taking just a little bit of an extreme measure on this one. It's not common to see extreme angles, but something like 70 degrees uh, can be achieved in a, in a splayed angle. You can go all the way up to 90, so I'm cutting these at 35 degrees just to show you how the math actually works. Now do note that every single time that I have made these cuts here, the reference marks were lined up on the saw as on the tube, and we definitely need that. Now here's where you need to pay some extreme close attention to this one. We do need to remove one third of a measurement here, but it's not the diameter of the tube. It's actually the distance across the area that you cut. Because when you cut a tube at an angle, it turns that opening into an elliptical shape or an oval shape. Now I'm measuring the two different uh, tubes here that we cut at two different angles, and you can see that there's two different measurements, and neither one of them is the diameter of the tube. So we're gonna remove one third of material off of that measurement, not the diameter of the tube. We're gonna remove one third off of the measurement across that opening. I'm using the reference point as one end, and of course the, the inside of the throat off of the other one as the two reference points. Now I've also taken the time to measure out the fence on my bandsaw here, which is going to be a great reference to line up the center of our reference mark with that section. That distance is actually half the diameter. So when we line it up, we get it cut straight down, both of these will line up exactly where they need to be, which is extremely important. Make sure that they're nice, tight fit, and trust your reference marks. Make sure you use your reference marks because your reference marks will ensure that you actually get the correct cut on each side just like you need. Now, if you don't have a result, something like this, with that clean fit and identical cuts, you either have a crappy bandsaw or you did not take the time and work your measurements correctly. So that was the 70 degree transition that we used on that one. So I'm going to shorten this up and uh, run the uh, 45 degree transition. Now I'm not spitting out the measurements on this one just because I'm trying to avoid confusion. You have to actually measure the piece that you're cutting, not the one that, you know, not, not the one that I'm doing here. So just make sure that you measure it. That's the whole point of this one is to show you how to do it, not necessarily tell you the dimensions of each one of these. Because again, this is all very calculated and engineered according to the job or the piece that actually needs to be done. So once again, we're lining everything up. We're making sure that it fits up absolutely beautifully and perfect, minimal gaps on these pieces, and then we're just gonna go ahead and stick the two of them together. Of course, we'll note one more time here that it is not common or not normal to see two different entry and exit angles. They're usually identical. So if you had 45 degrees going in, you'll have a 45 degree splay coming out. Not necessarily a 45 degree splay going in with a 70 degree splay coming out. They're typically matched, all right? So the whole point of this one is just to demonstrate that if your math is correct and your measurements are correct and you take your time, you will achieve that fit up and you will achieve one splayed X pipe, just like this. Two down, three to go. Not that difficult. Hopefully you paid attention to the math on that one. They're a little bit easier, in my opinion, to do than the parallel X pipe, but you know, at the end of the day, they're pretty much both the same. Now we get to actually combining the two of them. We're going to go parallel to splayed. Also very important that you pay attention to the math. Let's get on that one. The process is the most important way to actually get this set up correctly. Start with making the parallel X pipe just like we did earlier. Use the two cutback 90s, whatever distance it is, or whatever offset you choose, whether it's you know 25, 33%, 28.2, whatever. Get them all tacked together, and then we're gonna stick them into the bandsaw. 
measure the distance across to cut exactly halfway down just the same as we did when we sliced up the other 45s. Now once we have all of this cut apart, we can apply the formula. Whatever the cut is, the distance from the top to bottom or the opening there is X. Take X, make a note of it. Doesn't matter what the distance is, just make a note of it. Then you can go ahead and cut your transition angles for the splayed section. Whatever angle they are, it doesn't necessarily matter. As soon as you measure that same distance across of the longest opening, that is Y. Take Y and multiply it by 2. Now we can apply the rest of the formula. If you take Y multiplied by 2 and subtract X from that product, you will get Z. If you take Z, divide that by 2, you will get the amount that needs to come off of each side of the splayed section. That is the amount that will make it butt up perfect every single time. And now we'll just go through and stick them all back together just the same as we did before. Now, I did run into a mild snafu on this one, and I did not catch it on camera, but my bandsaw did snag that little section of the, uh, the tube on there, and it did uh, distort it a little bit. It bent it inward. The solution to that, aside from not doing it to begin with, of uh, taking a little bit more time on the bandsaw, is to grab a hold of some locking pliers and uh, clamping it back together so that they're actually uh, mated properly right where they need to be and uh, line back up. Just takes a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of working, not a problem. As soon as I have all that tacked up, we're going to cut our 90 in half, so that way we can get our parallel section set up. And that means we have two 45s that need to be tacked on to the end here, and as soon as they are tacked on, it will reveal one parallel to splayed X-pipe. Now the parallel to splayed X-pipe is probably the number one requested uh, piece that I've uh, actually been actually asked to make a lot of the times. And it's actually not that complicated and you see it quite often. It all depends on like the geometry and the layout of everything inside and underneath the vehicle, yada yada, etc, etc, right? Hopefully you're following along. Again, it is all very engineer designed per application, okay? So there's nothing wrong with doing this. But either way, that one's out of the way. Now you know how to make it. Moving along to the Y-pipe. Now. You'll often see this, and you'll hear a lot of arguing about this one, and just in case you want to skip over again, you know, I'll tell you right now, there's nothing wrong with merging two of the identical diameters into one of the same size diameter. Remember, this is all in pulse length or pulse, pulse variable. So basically, the engine is breathing out one pulse at a time. So if this is calculated correctly, absolutely nothing is wrong with merging into the same diameter because they're ultimately flowing one pulse at a time if your system is designed and engineered correctly. But you'll often see two smaller diameters being merged into one larger diameter. So in this case, we have two and a half inch pipes or tubes in this case. Um, and you might see one of those go into, say, a three inch. The way that's done, again, nothing wrong with that either, but the way that that's typically done is they'll take this assembly, weld it all up together, and then swage it or stretch that piece in the center where it merges, stretch it or swage it, move it out, expand it to the proper diameter of the new tube that it's going to merge into. I didn't do that in this case because I do not have a swaging die. And of course, I'm a little low on argon, so I couldn't weld this whole thing together. But that is something that can be done if you are doing this yourself and you don't have a swaging die. Just weld it up, take it down to an exhaust shop, and have them swage it out for you. Nine times out of ten, they'll do it for free. Maybe sometimes you need to kick them like five, ten bucks to do it. But either way, let's make the Y-pipe. Now for this job, I'm going to do pretty much all of my cut work at once. I'm going to start with doing the straight section, or at least the section where it becomes merged into one. I'm going to cut that length down. Usually it's about anywhere between four and six inches or so. And then I'm going to cut the standoffs on this one. And I'm cutting standoffs because it's just a little bit easier to work with the elbows because we have to take so much off of those elbows. So either way, I'll get those cut down. Then I'm going to slice up the elbows. Now the elbows, the, the dimensions are all the exact same. So we've got to slice two of them in half. Uh, one of them for the actual merge and the other one to bring the parallel section up in the Y-pipe itself. So making sure that they're nice and leveled, centered, everything is good, slice them up, we're getting ready to go. Now as mentioned earlier, it's a little bit easier to work with the elbows as they have their standoffs attached to them because we're actually going to take 50% of the elbow off because we're merging two of the same diameter into a single diameter which is the same as the two that uh, enter into the system. So in this case, I'm working with two and a half inch tube. We're taking two two and a half inch tubes and merging into a single two and a half inch tube. So since we have to cut 50% off, it's going to make it a little bit easier uh, with the standoffs attached. 
Now, since we are cutting 50% off, we need to make sure that it stays nice, flat, and even. And at 50%, it hangs over the edge of the, uh, the saw base there, so I'm going to take a piece of flat stock to uh, make sure that it actually stays nice, flat, even, and level. Just a nice little trick. Once again, <laughs> as if I didn't say it enough already, 50% of the tube has to come up because we're going to take two sections and merge them into one of an identical diameter. So it takes quite a bit off of there. And again, this is probably partly why the standoffs are nice to have on there if you choose to use them because there's not much metal at the top. And of course, the amount that it compresses and everything else like that, this the standoffs kind of help it while it's attached to the saw itself. Quick check on the diameter, making sure that everything is actually lined up where it needs to be. We're good to go, and let's tack it all up for the Y section. Once everything is confirmed and good to go, we're going to tack up the rest of it. Now there is absolutely no rule book, no standard, no saying, no nothing that says that a Y pipe must be parallel or splayed. Now you've seen a couple of different ways to make this happen and making it a splayed Y pipe. It could be either done the way that I just did it before tacking these elbows or done the other ways that we did splayed pipes. Either way you slice it, you can do it however you want. I chose to run parallel on this one just to kind of show you guys, but hey, it is what it is. This is two and one of the same diameter and as soon as I get it all tacked up, here is your parallel Y pipe. Little hold. All right, Y pipe is done, out of the way. Now, this is not necessarily one of the more difficult things to do, but I decided to throw it into this uh, mix of uh, fabricationables uh, just because it's very common to see. The H pipe, very easy to do. Let's knock it out. Start with the length of your primary tube and measure halfway down. Doesn't really matter how long it is, just measure halfway down or wherever it needs to be in the system. Then you can select the diameter of your balance tube. Now the balance tube, it's really calculated. Again, you gotta decide which one you need, which one is uh, right for you and all the rest of that good stuff. As soon as we get it cleaned into bird, we will actually cut our balance tube out of some two inch. Uh, from stainlessbros.com. This is what I used. Now the balance tube, you want to overcut the, the length of it so that way you can actually notch it out and get a clean profile. What I'm going to do to get that clean profile is just rely on an old school trick. I'm going to stick it in there, presumably at the area that we want it to be, you know, distance as or whatever our gap is, and I'm going to mark it out with a marker. Now this is going to look like it's going to be an arduous and tedious you know, ongoing task that's going to take forever. Of course this is sped up, but take my word for it, the entire process of notching both sides just like we do in how to notch tubes with a tube notcher, or at least similar to it, 2 minutes and 11 seconds. So uh, you can use whatever method works for you, but you know, this one, 2 minutes 11 seconds, notches on both sides. As soon as we have it set up, we're actually going to stick them back into the primary tubes and we'll get them lined up. Now the idea here is to get them as close to those walls as possible because you can't always access the inside of that tube to get them all cleaned up, but we want that nice smooth profile. Now one thing that I did not do in this one, which I should make mention of, if your exhaust system requires you to separate both banks, then you need to find some way to attach these two down the middle, or at least the balance tube needs to have some sort of a clamp in it. You can use a V-band or flange clamps or whatever the case is. If you choose to use one of those or your system requires it, make sure you stick that in before you tack everything all together or before you weld it all. As soon as we got it done, there is your H-pipe. Simple, simple, simple. Perfect. Okay. There is a stack of five different transitions for you to learn and uh, work with on your own. Now, if you uh, do all of these, like everybody else, I always encourage you to tag me uh, so I can follow along, see your progress. I absolutely love it when people uh, show me how they've gone after watching one of these videos. So honored and humbled every single time that happens. If you want to do all that, check down in the description. You'll see a link to our Instagram at the.fabricator, facebook.com slash the fabricator series. You can email me on the fabrication series.com website. 
and more. It's all down in the description there. Now, I want to thank you guys for watching as always. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel. Make sure you ring that bell for all the exclusive content you guys don't normally get to see that's public here. And I will see you guys on the next episode.